There are two huge obstacles standing in the way of us going back to the moon. There's no water there, and there's no oxygen. Or is there? NASA is looking in unusual places, trying to find the stuff that will allow us to live on the moon. Want to know where they're looking? We've got the dirt, next on Real World. NASA's plans to send astronauts back to the moon include habitation. That's right, astronauts living on the moon. But to live there, they're going to need water and oxygen. And bringing those life-sustaining items from Earth will be too expensive. So scientists and engineers are looking for other ways to provide water and oxygen. And they're looking in Hawaii of all places. Why Hawaii? The reason we're here in Hawaii is because the terrain and the soil is very similar both in its physical properties and its chemical structure to what is on the moon. Frank Schoenger runs the Pacific International Space Center for Exploration Systems, also known as Pisces, at the University of Hawaii at Hilo. He invited an international team, led by NASA, to set up camp more than two and a half kilometers up Hawaii's Mauna Kea volcano. Their mission? To see if they can make the resources they'll need on the moon out of volcanic dust. The project is called In Situ Resource Utilization, or ISRU. Engineers tested systems in Hawaii to get an idea of how they might work in similar conditions on the moon. The process begins with the volcanic soil. The, the first step is to go and get it. We use uh, some uh, small rovers with some special attachments on them. Tom Simon is the ISRU Project Office Chief Engineer. That's the full-size rover for what we need for oxygen extraction. It uses a, a bucket in the middle, almost the size of its body, uh, to be able to go and collect the material. Depending on the final surface system's architecture chosen, either small rovers like these, or a larger human rover called Chariot will take their payload and deliver it to a reactor. NASA brought two prototype reactors to Hawaii. Both of them use a technique called hydrogen reduction. It's the simplest way we know of to make oxygen. Bill Larson is the Space Resource Utilization Deputy Project Manager. You put the soil in the reactor, you heat it up to 900 degrees C, flow hydrogen through it. The hydrogen binds with oxygen on the iron oxide in the soil, making water. You then electrolyze the water, you've got oxygen, you put the hydrogen back in the system, and you do it all over again. Conservative estimates show these systems producing their own weight in oxygen in six months, enough oxygen to sustain four astronauts. The reactor's life expectancy is three years. So, over a lifetime, these reactors could free up six times their own weight and payload. The work in Hawaii was one of the first major tests of this system. So how did it do? The test this week has been very successful for us. We've accomplished all of our test objectives. Now we will take these samples back to the lab and check them out and learn from what we did here. This takes us a small step up the technology readiness scale. When you start integrating in a relevant environment, that's when you're really getting ready to build flight hardware. Test, analyze, and retest, all part of the design process. Passing the ISRU test is another huge step in NASA's plans to go back to the moon. You can follow this journey at www.nasa.gov.